Let's take a look at the setup here. So we're talking about a solar cell, and you want a solar cell to be black. You want it to absorb all the light that falls on it. And that makes sense because if you reflect light, you're not converting it into electricity. So the solar cell needs to be black. It needs to absorb. It needs to not reflect. And the way you do that is you put a coating on top. So let's draw a picture this way. Here's air which has an index of refraction of 1, and here's the solar cell, which has an index of refraction of 3.50, i.e. this is the silicon solar cell. This is its index of refraction. And on top of it, we put a thin layer of silicon dioxide, okay, which has an index of refraction of 1.45. Now light comes in, okay, and when light comes in, and let's draw a picture of a ray of light coming in, and it's 700 nanometers, so we'll choose red, and it hits this first surface, it's going from air, n equals 1, into silicon dioxide, n equals 1.45. There's a change of index of refraction, and so therefore there will be a reflection. And it's also going to change the phase, because the index of refraction increases, okay? But some of the light will continue through the layer, and then it hits this boundary, and that goes from n equals 1.45 of the silicon dioxide to the n equals 3.5 of the silicon. So there'll be a reflection at this boundary as well. Now at this boundary, the index of refraction increases, so there'll be a phase change at this boundary as well. Now the ray that reflects from this surface, or the light that reflects from this surface, can interfere with the light from this surface. And we want these two to destructively interfere, because then I won't get the reflection, and instead of getting the reflection, I'll get what I want, which is transmission into the solar cell so that these photons can be absorbed and be used by the solar cell. That's what I'm looking for here. Now here's the thing. <clears throat> In order to arrange it so that I have destructive interference between these two beams of light, I need to have a, th thick a certain thickness of coating. Okay, so we'll say this has a certain thickness T. There's a phase change at this boundary, there's a phase change at this boundary, and so we need to use the condition for destructive interference in the condition where I have two reflective phase changes. Phase change here, phase change here, and that condition is this. 2 times the thickness of the layer is equal to m plus a half times lambda over n. Now notice this. N is the index of refraction of the thin film because the light is traveling through this thin film and there's a factor of two because it makes two transits through this thickness, okay? We have to put in the index of refraction of the thin film and we know what that is. <coughs> That's 1.45, okay? Lambda is the wavelength of light. That's 700 nanometers, okay? We know that. T, that's what we're trying to find, so we'll put a question mark with that. The other thing to think about in this equation is m, and what do we want to use for the value of m? Well, here's the thing. We're asked to find the minimum thickness, okay? So if we're looking for the minimum thickness, I want the smallest possible value of m. Well, the smallest possible value of m, of course, is just zero. And so our condition just reduces to this. Two times the thickness is equal to 1 half times lambda over n. And the values that we use, as we noted before, lambda is equal to 700 nanometers. The index of refraction is 1.45. One of the things people get confused with in problems like this is which index of refraction do I use? I'm given three in this problem. But you have to use this one because this is the layer that the light transits. It goes through the layer. And so that's the index of refraction we use here. With this setup, we're ready to solve. But before we solve, <clears throat> let's think about what our answer is going to look like. I want to have a destructive interference between these two. And I get a destructive interference when the path length difference is half a wavelength. And it makes two transits through the layer. And so I expect this layer thickness to be significantly smaller than the wavelength of light. And that's okay. That's okay. It, I mean, the wavelength of light on an atomic scale is actually pretty big. And so it's going to seem like a thin film from the point of view of, of the light. But from the point of view of the atoms, um, it's pretty thick. An atom is like a tenth of a nanometer in size, and so we can stack a lot of atom layers here. But let's go ahead and do our solution, okay? And I'm going to take this equation, I'm going to rewrite it this way. 
The thickness is just equal to 1 quarter times lambda over n. And we know what values we use for this, okay? The wavelength of light is 700 nanometers. The index of refraction is 1.45. Now notice this. I have 4 and I have 1.45. These are both just pure numbers. There's no dimensions with this. So I'm going to keep lambda in nanometers because whatever I put in here, whatever units I put in, these are just pure numbers. I'm going to divide numbers by numbers. The units won't change, and so I'll end up with nanometers at the end. This is a three significant figure problem, so I'm going to compute my answer to three significant figures, and if I do that for the thickness, I get 121 nanometers. Here's our assessment. We said that we expected this result to be small compared to the wavelength of light, and it is. It's a little bit less. It's probably about a fifth, <clears throat> less than a fifth of the wavelength of light, and that makes sense. But in terms of atom thicknesses, atoms have a diameter of, say, you know, 0.1 nanometers or so. And so this is many, many atom thicknesses. And so you can easily build a layer this size. So this number is, uh, is easily able to be accomplished. And in fact, this is extremely practical. With this thickness coding, if I don't get the reflection, these two beams of light cancel each other, and I only get the transmission. The light goes through. The solar cell absorbs it, converts it into electricity. And so everything works the way we think it should, and this problem does match the way we think the world works.